Module five focuses on strategies to consider in employing a coordinated care model involving primary care providers to decrease the risk of relapse for people with opioid use disorder. There's an excellent review by uh, Todd Cortius, uh, who's in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2017, that outlined 12 primary care models for opioid use disorder that are in existence. And I really want to just speak about two of them. One of them is the hub and spoke model, collaborative opioid treatment model. This has also become called the Vermont model, in which there is a central intake, usually at an opioid treatment program. There is a centralized induction that occurs, so starting the buprenorphine, and then, uh, and of course, assessment and all these other uh, kinds of things that we talked about earlier occur. And then those folks are transferred to the spoke which is usually a primary care provider that will provide the ongoing care. This model has been very successful in Vermont. It's being replicated in Maine. And there is an, also a big project in California to replicate it as well. And it's seen a lot of success. The model that uh, Dr. Gaverman in my program is developed on is called the Massachusetts Nurse Care Manager Model. And this is a model in which a, uh, there's a dedicated nurse supporting the prescriber in a health center. Typically, these are federally qualified. Ours is a lookalike, but uh, the principle is the same, that, that there is support staff who is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of these patients uh, in support of the prescriber. I urge you to pull the article and look at the other models, um, again, the variations, but they all have four major components. Pharmacotherapy is a key piece of it. So medication works, as we talked about. Educational in interventions, so educating both uh, patients and families, but also staff about, about the nature, you know, the chronic relapsing nature of the illness and the need for um, effective medication. Coordination and integration with other medical and psychosocial needs is a big part of it. So many of these studies use case management. A number are increasingly using recovery coaches and peer um, support uh, interventions, again, to help support people and coordinate their care to meet the um, you know, multi-dimensional needs and deficits that folks experience. And then finally, the delivery of psychosocial services. So this typically involves either delivering counseling on site, integrated into the program, or by referral uh, and ensuring that folks are, are uh, getting to where they need to be. Well, as Dr. Freeman described in detail, providing this addiction treatment within the primary care office makes it much more accessible to patients and allows the primary care provider to collaborate and coordinate with other members of the patient's care team. So the syllabus has many useful links. I wanna particularly highlight that there's a link to pres prescription drug monitoring programs, to the buprenorphine physician locator, and to the buprenorphine waiver program. Please look through them, they're all very useful links. Several models of coordinated care have been developed for primary care settings. I want to just emphasize that nearly 80% of Americans with opioid use disorder currently do not receive effective treatment with medication. It's a huge number. Primary care providers have the opportunity to broadly increase access to this life-saving treatment. The benefits of the treatment are dramatic and the work is very rewarding. I encourage all of you, if you have not already done so, to sign up for a buprenorphine waiver course, which takes a total of eight hours and provides you with the ability to prescribe office-based addiction treatment for those in need.